So that was Kindest to Thieves with Bugle Blair from the brand new EP, The Taxidermist. Um, <laughs> the first thing I've noticed tonight, Chris, when you come in, you're on your own. Last time, you weren't on your own. <laughs> no, I wasn't. <laughs> so there's a bit of a change to the... Um, yeah. I mean, there's been a few incarnations of yeah. Kindest of Thieves. <laughs> Just <maybe>. a few. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, what's it like being back on your own? Um, being a solo performer is strange, but... Um, um, managing how different it is, um, I hope, because um, instead of your thoughts being purely about music and kind of it being kind of you and me against the world, mate, kind of thing, which is what kind of what it was before. Um, with Sam, it was a duo, a yeah. guitar drum duo, and, and um, it's nice to be back. But um, being a solo artist is different, definitely. Yeah, it's got to be a totally different mindset. Isn't it? Yeah, you you have to worry about more than just the songs and the material. It becomes about okay, and, and now I've got to worry about that business bit that comes along <laughs> with it, <laughs> all yeah. on my own. That's funny, isn't it? Yeah. But you 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 you've got to do that, and and um, the insecurities of music, which are normally shared. I mean, it's not like it's not like where's my little violin? I love it. Otherwise, I wouldn't do it. Do you know what I mean? But yeah. Yeah, well I think, I'm going to talk about your lyrics, but I'm going to do that a little bit later on because it's, it's funny you mentioned insecurities because... Yeah, because uh, I'm riddled with them. <laughs> yeah, pretty much, but we'll talk about that perhaps in, in the second half of the, the interview. Um, but yeah, and but the thing is with this, I mean what I find about your music is that it's always incredibly interesting because you're reinventing yourself, you know, and I've known that you've, you've looked back to years like the 50s you know, previously. Yeah. But this time you've gone even further back. I mean, you're into pretty much ragtime. 20s and 30s. 1920s yeah. and 30s. Yeah. You know, what is it about that era that, that sort of you know, stimulated your musical talent down this line? You know what, I think some of my friends, um, musician friends, got into jazz at a time when I wasn't done with rockabilly and I just couldn't understand the jazz thing. At the time, it wasn't something I wanted to entertain. I wasn't done on what I was doing. Yeah. And, um, that might sound a bit like, well, you don't have to be quite that focused, you can listen to other stuff. But at that time, it just needed to be what it was, and that's that. But I didn't understand this jazz thing, it just didn't do it for me. And then, literally just one day, it, it was like that. It just, you heard all these chords, and and you, you realised that those chords are enabling more complex melodies. Even on the, you know, 1920 Al Jolson, you know what I mean? But these songs aren't GCD. These are not massively complicated, but they're diminished chords and augmented chords, and and we're expanding what we can do with melody with that. And I just think, you listen to Billie Holiday or Al Jolson or, you know, people later um, in New Orleans, Lizzie Miles, you know what I mean? You listen to these people and you just go, it just doesn't get better than that. And I truly don't believe it did. Yeah. yeah. Just as songwriters and, and, and the songs that were written for these people, just they were just perfect then and they were they were written to be covered by everybody. And that was for me like what a success because it worked. People are still playing those songs. Yeah, I think, you know, when people talk about that that these days you know, there's music written for artists, mm. you know, and there's a kind of, well, they're not writing their own stuff, but when you look back, yeah. there was a lot of great artists who never wrote a job, oh, of but, course, they, but yeah. they were given, but they were given good songs. They were amazing interpreters, yeah, yeah, that, yeah, you know. Yeah, you know, they were great songs to begin with, yeah. and interpreted. Now and Jolson interpreted. did write, but um, Billie Holiday not so much, I, yeah, think, yeah. I, I mean, I might be totally wrong there, but I'm, I'm sure I heard that she didn't write too much, she did yeah. write some things, yeah, yeah. but n not everything, you know, Sunny Side of the Street she didn't write, but her no. version of that is wonderful. Very on that, <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, I, I, again, just the fact that you're doing something different mm. you know, at the moment, I always think is, I always look forward to listening to what you've got. Oh, that's, that's thank you, that that's good. You know, and I have written a review of the EP, yeah. which is on the Sonic Bandwagon website, yeah. so you can have a look at that, sonicbandwagon.com. Um, but is it right that this is kind of a precursor to an album? You're going to have an album coming out very shortly? I wouldn't say very shortly, I mean, this year there has been a hell of a lot of recording. Um, 
basically is my way of finding what I wanted to do as a solo act. I mean, I knew I wanted to do this kind of ragtime, gypsy, kind of infused, kind of acoustic, predominantly music, but yeah. not pretty acoustic, heavy, dark, hitting acoustic, but not heavy with distortion. It was important to me that it was lyrically heavy, in the way that early Nick Cave is heavy. Yeah, as in it, yeah. it's, it's dark, but it isn't, you know what I mean? It had a subtlety, it had a beauty, I, I hope, and all that kind of stuff is involved, but, um, yeah. Well, let's listen, you've done a couple of live session tracks for us. Mm. Thank you very much. Very no, thanks idea. for having me again. Um, so, we will have a listen to Marvel's Medicine, uh, the live version, and this is also on the new EP. Um, it kicks it off. Yeah. yeah, you can get over that now. It's you can. It um, on Bandcamp. <clears throat> yeah, it's on Bandcamp. Bandcamp.com. Right. Or okay. if you go to Facebook and the dot com, it's very clear that you can find it in all those places. It's kind of that might be easier. Yeah. But um, but yeah, it will soon be on iTunes and uh, Spotify as well. I just have to clear some other things off there <laughs> first. But, yeah. Okay. Well, we'll put some links up on the. Something about Facebook, Facebook Thank you. Twitter, etc. etc. Um, you've got gigs coming up as well? Um, I do, again, all on all on the Facebook. Um, there's um, two in Manchester for the rest of the year, one in Chester and one in Macclesfield. So you heard Kindest of Thieves, Marvelous Medicine, uh, live session track there from Mr. Chris Fox, and then uh, something slightly more, uh, well, still very, very retro, Atomic claims there, yeah. the Punk and Roll, I'd call that. Punk and Roll. Punk and Roll, there you go, <laughs> yeah. From their album, 14 Inches of Fist, 
which was probably as well not to go down the <laughs> route of what. Yeah. Yeah. There you go, which came out on the 11th of May. Shall we move on very swiftly from that? Well, Great track, though. Yeah. Dirty. Yeah. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what I wanted to talk to you about, having mm. listened to your music over the years, um, whichever route you take on what you're doing, it's always very dark. Um, and you've been through, as I said before, various incarnations. But not only is it dark, I hear a lot of insecurities in there. You come across as a very confident young man. Um, <laughs> but listening, and I get a feeling that you do write from the heart. It's not it's just, very honest. Yeah, I think exactly. I think it is honest. But th there is a lot of insecurities within the lyrics. Mm -hmm. um, is that your personality? Yeah. Are you very much an insecure person? Yes and no. I mean, I think like everyone, we experience both. We experience moments of being very dominant and in control of a situation, and and this is any situation. You know what I mean? I mean, it's not helped the fact that most of my songs are about very specific things. You know what I mean? I, I would. I've never written about a night out. I'm no. not that kind of act, do you know what I mean? No, I, no. I think it's really interesting when people do that and sometimes people can put really interesting spins on the mundane and that's the idea of those people. Yeah. Writing that way is to create something wonderful out of something quite dull. I, I was unable to do that or it, I was never inspired enough to do it. So my, my thought was, what's bothering me? What do I think of the world and <laughs> these areas and how do they make me feel? And I think I'm often split between being incredibly kind of interested in control. So a lot, a lot of this stuff is, is about love and and a lot of it's about sex, as we know, because it's been that way for years. <laughs> Everything I write seems to have that tinge yeah, in I was some way, or at least that yeah. kind of imagery involved. Yes, definitely. And a lot of it's about mental health as well, so a lot of it is quite bleak, I guess. But the idea is like, you know, the insecurities are in a way the light end of that. They're the human element, I, I, I hope. So, talking about all these things and I, in a way I'm kind of spitting, I, I'm kind of, it's nasty and it's seething and it's kind of looking and being quite aggressive about what I think and what's going on. And if I'm talking about whatever, I'm normally talking at it straight in from a point of quite, a point of attack really. Yeah, yeah. And very clear and kind of dominant views and here we go and then within those there will be moments where I make myself sound like a shivering child, do you know what I mean? Because that that's life and that's unfortunately who I am. <laughs> there are moments where I'm totally aware and I'm angry or I'm very emotive and then there'll be times when I'm completely numb, I don't want to talk or there'll be points where I'm so honest that it's hard to listen back to sometimes. And they're the songs that you go, okay, maybe they're not. You, you always do question, is it too honest? Yeah, yeah. And yeah. there have been a few songs, especially in the duo, that were too honest. Right. That we, right. I really struggled to play them live. Oh, okay. A number of times it was just like, looking back on those, they were very specific times, you know what I mean? So you can kind of, I avoid that now. Yeah. If I know that that's the way a song's gonna come out, I'll pen it, but I won't put thought into it as a song that will be released to humans and people will listen to them. Yeah. yeah. It becomes a different thing than it, but that just becomes a bit of therapy, or just stick it in a book, and you never know. Maybe it'll be something for the future, but um, I hope the idea is to be honest, to make, to hopefully look at things that people aren't looking at or look at them in a different way and every song should have a different every song could be about the exact same thing but if i'm coming from a different standpoint yeah every time then that's enough for me right. yeah and it, and it must be a difficult one because you you're centering yourself to an extent yeah. aren't you you know yeah to try and make it a little bit more palatable which means you've got even darker thoughts than what you put down that's a true lot of the time and another, but and we all do don't we we all do yeah. and i mean but there is that element of i i like to think that especially while it's a one it's a one man thing now yeah yeah i'm terrible in social situations at being in in the moment and being me and and or secondly just being up front with people about who you are 
is difficult when you're not sure or when there's yeah, certain aspects yeah. of it that confuse you or that you don't like or whatever. So you write all this and you put it out and weirdly people find you through that. Yeah. So they, right. they discover who you are and if they like you or not before they've even met you. I tell you what, cuts down time, I love it. <laughs> it's brilliant. It honestly, it does. And I mean, I've met some wonderful people through Thieves gigs and through re releases who come to shows and um, buy the releases, um, watch the videos, you know, read the Facebook things. We'll have a drink at the gig or something yeah, and we'll, yeah. we'll talk. And, and what's interesting is the common theme between all of them is the lyricism. That's what that's what they're interested in, the lyricism. And that that's the whole reason why I do it anyway. Yeah. If I was, if someone else was giving me lyrics to write, I don't think I'd be doing this now. Right. There'd yeah. be no point no. to me. There'd be, yeah. what, what's the point? You've said it. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. So It's you that wants to say it ultimately. Oh, and, and definitely. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Excellent. Well, you've said, done a couple of live tracks for us, um, and this is one you've recorded, but it's not been released this yeah, year. Yeah, uh, um, this release, that I've just put out the taxidermist. That will um, there'll be another one, um, another EP like that, like that. Um, I don't know when. I'm not saying when I'll get in trouble, <laughs> but at some point there will be another one, and um, that will be the lead track from that. Okay. All right. So this is an exclusive then for Sonic Bandwagon. It's never been played live anywhere else. So Excellent. you are you are the first. Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, so this is a track called All the Trumpets in New Orleans. Uh, Sonic Bandwagon Live Exclusive uh, from Chris Fox, aka Kindest of Thieves. Always a pleasure, Chris. And thank you. you so much for coming no, in. Thank you. Um, I'm you. looking forward to uh, hearing the next release as well. Thanks. So I will catch up with you again soon. You will. Thank All you. Right. Thanks.